Hey guys, how you going? My name is Dom and today I'm going to be showing you how to react to click and hold events in JavaScript. Okay, so it's going to be relatively straightforward to achieve this and as you may have already guessed, it is not supported natively in JavaScript. So you're going to need to code it yourself or use a library. Now, my general recommendation is going to be to use a library, but in those situations where uh, you can't use a library or you're just curious how to do it yourself, uh, this is what this video is about. So I'm going to be showing you how to code that from scratch. So as we can see right here, I've got this HTML file and of course we're going to be applying the click and hold events to this button right here. So going inside the text editor, we've got this right now, of course this HTML file and I've included a JavaScript file right down here and it is currently empty. So let's begin work on getting this click and hold behavior to of course work. Okay, so we're going to be using a class to achieve this and this is because we need to hold information uh, regarding the states of what the user is currently doing and this is going to assist us in detecting a hold action okay so right here we can make a new class called click and hold just like this and then we're going to of course specify a constructor so the constructor of our class right here is going to take through two arguments the first one is going to be the target element to of course apply the event to in this case right here it is going to be that button and the second argument is going to be the callback function. And of course, this callback function is what you specify to run once the button has been clicked and held on. Okay, so inside the constructor, we can just say this.target is equal to target. And of course, the same thing for the callback, just to get a reference to both of those um, properties right there. Now, I'm going to add some JS doc right up here just to make our lives easier when it comes to coding this out. So we can say right here for the target, the type is going to be event target. And this right here just means that we can apply event listeners to the HTML element so we're going to say the HTML elements to um, apply the events to and then for the callback of course it's going to be a function so we can specify function right inside here and then we can say uh, the function to run once uh, the target is clicked and held okay cool so now the way it's going to work is essentially we're going to be uh, like I said, uh, like I mentioned earlier, we're going to get information about the current state of the button or what the user is doing. In this case, we need to know when the user is holding on the button. So we're going to say here as a state property or instance property of the class, we're going to say uh, this. Uh, dot is held is equal to false by default. So of course the user by default is not holding onto the button. We're going to also specify a second property here. Uh, this one's going to be called active hold timeout ID. So we're going to see how this works very shortly. But for now, let's just assign this to a value of null. So now moving on. We need to react to when the user uh, begins to hold on the button. So we're going to specify a function right here called on hold start. And I've used an underscore here just to convey that this method is supposed to be private. Um, so anyway, inside here, we're going to say, uh, firstly, when the user begins holding on the actual button, we're going to say this dot is held is going to be equal to true. Okay, and we're going to do a very similar thing right now on a second method. This one is going to be called on hold um, end. And here we're going to reset is hold to be false. So how is this going to work? Well, inside the on hold start, as soon as the user begins to hold on the button, we're going to run a piece of code one second after that action. So we're going to say right inside here, set timeout. We're going to run this function, like I mentioned, after one second of the user, um, you know, beginning to hold onto your button. OK, so inside this function, we're going to check if the user has not left off the button and the on hold end hasn't been called yet. So we're going to say if this dot is held. So essentially, if the user has not triggered this 
you know, on hold end, and this is held equal to false. So if it is still true, then we're going to run the callback function. The user is still holding onto the button after one second. So we're going to say this dot callback, and then we're just going to call it just like that. So there is one problem here, and that is if I was to uh, hold on the button and then let go and then hold again after half a second, this set timeout is going to run twice and we're going to get this callback running twice. So to prevent that, we need to say right inside here, this dot active hold timeout ID is equal to set timeout. So set timeout is going to return an ID and that ID just identifies this timeout function and this whole thing right here. And then inside the on hold n, we need to then essentially remove this timeout from running and prevent it from, of course, running and causing our callback. So we're going to say right down here, clear timeout, and then we're going to say this dot active uh, active hold timeout ID just like that. So now it's going to work perfectly fine. So We've specified both of these methods right here. How do we now call them uh, based on the user interacting with the button? Well, we're going to be using a set of events right in the constructor. So we're going to say, um, you know, uh, to support both desktop and mobile, we need to listen for both the mouse events and the touch events. So we're going to specify an array right here. We're going to firstly specify the desktop mouse down event right here. So when the user initially clicks on the button but does not lift off, so it is not a click, it is simply just a mouse down. When that happens, we're going to run this function. Also, uh, the touch start, we're also going to run that function when the user begins to touch a button. So we're going to say for each one of these event types right here, we're going to grab onto the string uh, version of the type. So just type right there. Then we're going to say inside here, uh, this dot add event listener. My mistake, sorry, this dot target dot add event listener. As we can see by specifying that JS doc, we have these hints for the methods to use. So we're going to say add event listener and then we're going to say inside here, specify the type, obviously going to be both mouse down and touch start right here. We're going to say for the function to call on the event occurrence, we're going to say this dot on hold start. Then we're going to say dot bind then pass through this. And basically what this bind this is doing is simply just saying when this function runs, it's going to treat the keyword this as the current instance of this click and hold. Okay, we're going to see how that works shortly. But now we have this initial, uh, you know, function call. We can do the exact same thing this time for the on hold end right down here and specify a lot more event types here for when the user clicks away from the button. So. For this, we're going to use the mouse up event, also the mouse leave event, uh, the mouse out event, and the touch end event, as well as the touch cancel event. So of course, we're trying to cover as many scenarios as possible. Um, the reason why there's so many is because sometimes, you know, when you press the escape button on the keyboard, it's going to trigger one of these events instead of the mouse up. Same goes for mobile, the touch end may not be called, but the touch cancel may be called depending on what the user is doing. So with all that being said, we've basically got all of the code set up for this to work. So now how do we use this class? Well, we can go down here. We can firstly get a reference to our button. So we're going to say const my button equal to document dot get element by ID pass through here. Of course, my button because the ID of my button is my button in the HTML right inside here. So now uh, we can simply uh, make a new instance of the click and hold right here. So new click and hold pass through my button as the target. And then we can say for the callback function, we can simply do an alert. We're going to say uh, alert, uh, click and hold just like that. So now we can save this and it's all going to work. Let's save this, go inside the browser, refresh. And now if I was to click on the button, 
we get nothing after a second. If I was to click and hold for about half a second, we get nothing. If I was to click and hold for more than a second, we get right here, click and hold. Okay, so it's all working perfectly fine. Now, I wanna show you what happens if I don't do this active timeout ID. Let's remove this right here, then save it and try again. And now I'm gonna click this initially, then hold, boom, it happened a lot quicker than it should have. And also we get two events right there. So that is what this set timeout, uh, sorry, this, this uh, timeout ID is doing. It is preventing that bug, I guess, okay? So now, what is one way to uh, speed it up or uh, make it easier to use this class? Well, we're gonna go right down here. We're gonna declare a new static method and this one is gonna simply just be called apply. So here, it's gonna take through the exact same arguments as the constructor. So we're gonna say target and callback right here. And we may as well just copy and paste the JS doc if you want, it's up to you, just like that. So now, this one is gonna simply say inside here, a new uh, click and hold instance passing through target and callback. The reason for, uh, for doing this right here is so we don't need to call new inside our main you know, code for the website or application. So we can instead say right down here, click and hold dot apply, then pass through my button, and then once again, passing through the callback function right inside here. And this right here just makes it a little bit cleaner to work with because typically when you call new and then a class, you are typically getting a reference to the object you are creating and then you are doing things with that object. In this case, we are simply just wanting to apply, you know, the actual event. So this right here is gonna work perfectly fine. Let's save this and just make sure it works. Refresh, click and hold, and we can see it is still working perfectly fine. So that is it for today's video. I'll be leaving a link to the code in the description below if you want to check that out and reference it. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video.